All right, hello fun and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Kerbal Weather Project, which is being made by form user CMET24, and what this glorious little piece of work is looking to add into the game is climate and weather data, and this is pretty cool as it adds an extra fun little bit of science on top of things we've already got like logging temperature data or gravity data, etc. Now you get some climate data, but what makes this a lot better than the standard stock ones like temperature is that this is dynamic and constantly changing all over the world, and I love that, and it gets better. That climate and weather data is actually going to affect the aerodynamics of flight. And also, well, you know, things like wind speeds are going to affect you. Say you're coming in for a landing on the runway, you start getting some crazy crosswinds, yeah, you may not want to land quite yet, or it's going to be one heck of a bumpy landing. And I love all of that. It adds in a fun little bit of extra realism on top of the scientific element of the mod, which is just so cool. So let's jump over here to this Ares 3A I have on the runway, and let's talk about what all we do get with this mod. But first, we are going to have to talk about some mod requirements. To get this thing to function properly, you are going to need the toolbar control controller, the click-through blocker, as well as the modular flight integrator. Now with those, this mod will function as intended and will give you that climate and weather simulation in the world. Now here is one thing I gotta get off the off here right off the bat in um if you were expecting weather as in a storm in the distance or rain suddenly coming down on you while you're trying to fly, that is sadly not what this mod does. It is basically adding in an ever-changing dynamic simulation of climate and weather data, changing everything around you from air pressure, density, temperatures, wind speed, and direction, and having that affect the aerodynamics and thermodynamics of flight. So yeah, you're not going to be getting storms off in the distance, but high winds can come and really wreck your day. For instance, I was testing earlier and tried launching a rocket in 50 meter per second winds and it caused my rocket to crash into the support tower it was attached to when I launched. So yeah, you may want to cancel a rocket launch or a flight when the weather's a bit crazy. So I'm still very much a big fan of this as it does add in that extra interesting bit of realism and plus I'm always a sucker for science. So let's take a look at the data you do get. Now, once everything's installed properly, you're going to get this nice little button over here for the Kerbal Weather Project. You click that, and this is the main bit of UI that is basically going to give you all the information available to you. And we can toggle that on or off at any time if you do so desire. Say the winds are getting too much. The top button here is the toggle KWP button, and that will turn on or off the weather in the game. Now then after that we have the Climatology and Weather button. Now Climatology is basically going to give you all the information about you and your flight, where you currently are. Weather is going to tell you the information at the Kerbal Space Center, which is very useful if, again, if you're landing at the runway and you're far back out, like say over by the mountains, and you want to know, hey, what's the weather I'm going to be expecting at the Kerbal Space Center when landing? Well, there you are. You can click that button and it will tell you. But let's stick to the climatology button here of just our ship for the moment. And how we get those different bits of info is with these bottom six buttons here. The first is ground track. And this is basic information about your ship, its current location, its terrain height, and its biome. So just some nice useful info. We then have flight info, which is going to indicate your airspeed, both indicated and equivalent, as well as true and ground airspeed. We then have the wind button, which is going to be the wind speed and direction, showing you horizontal wind speed, vertical wind speed, wind direction in degrees, and wind direction in the cardinal direction. So right now the wind's coming 32 degrees out of the north by northeast. Very cool. 
Now we then have the X wind button, and this is gonna be the relative wind to the vehicle, showing tailwind, headwind, and crosswind. And as you can see here, we've got a constantly fluctuating headwind and crosswind. Again, that whole dynamic aspect to this, this information is gonna change constantly wherever you are in the world, and it's gonna change depending on other conditions too. The latitude, longitude, all affects it. Your altitude affects how it dynamically does the weather. It, it's just all very cool. It's a very neat simulation. And uh, then after the X wind button, our next one here is WX. And this is more about the ambient weather where we have the current pressure, the density, temperature, relative humidity, cloud cover, and visibility. Sadly, the cloud cover, like I said, doesn't add anything like clouds. It'd be awesome if it does. And who knows, maybe it will one day, but for now, it's just a basic stat number here. But again, all this ambient weather is gonna affect your aerodynamics and thermodynamics. And the final thing, well, I was actually going to tell you how it's going to affect it. The arrow button is your aerodynamics tab, showing you the Mach number, the speed of sound for this area, the external shock, temperature, dynamic pressure, angle of attack, a side slip angle, total lift, total drag, and lift to drag ratio. So this is going to be showing you all that aerodynamic data. Perhaps not the most useful thing for your typical casual player, but hey, if you're an engineer or science student, this is just some cool info to have. Now. As for all this useful information, you'll notice we've had everything on one at a time, but you can actually have on multiple things. You just keep clicking the buttons and it's gonna add it into the list. So if you want all six, it's kind of a long, cumbersome list. Me, personally, I've only tended to really have on one or two of these at a time. Ground track's cool, but I think my favorites on here have been the wind and X-wind. I think those are the two most useful considering it, they're the ones that are going to affect you the most. Sure, yes, things like the ambient weather do also affect your aerodynamics and whatnot, but it's the wind speed and especially the tail head and crosswind that's going to really potentially ruin your day when flying. And again, like I said earlier, we can always switch this from the climatology of our location over the weather button showing it at the Kerbal Space Center. Another useful thing so you can see, hey, What's, you know, the wind direction coming out of uh, from the Kerbal Space Center? And so that's pretty cool. Now, not much of a difference since, you know, we're basically just outside of the Kerbal Space Center, but it is a little bit of a difference. You can see here it's almost twice the wind speed at the moment, which is pretty cool as it is, again, dynamic based on, you know, where you are in the world. So it's not gonna be perfect for seeing because uh, the Kerbal Space Center is technically over there and well, we're landing here, but it's gonna give you an idea of the area. Now, we're not actually gonna take this plane off right now because the um, wind speeds and all are just so low, it's not really gonna affect this ship, but we are gonna take a look at how it can affect it a lot here in a little bit. So let's uh, just hold off on that for now. But what we are gonna do is go to the tracking station because another cool part of this is we can even track weather from space. And that is fun. And something I think is what I'm looking forward to the most with this mod as to how other modders will take advantage of this. I can imagine some of the science mods out there really going to town with making science satellite parts because, well, while we're in orbit right now, we can click that same Kerbal Weather Project button and, well, we get the same UI where we have our climatology. We can check the ground track, all the same info there. We can check the SRF button, which is surface weather, showing sea level pressure, temperature, relative humidity, and wind speed. And the SAT button is the... Uh, did I, hold on, did I click that, those ones right? Did I accidentally click the SRF surface weather? Yes. And then the SAT one is remote sensing. I, for some reason, thought I got those two confused there. But yes, the SAT button, remote sensing, will show you the outgoing long wave radiation, total cloud cover, the precipitable water, and the precipitation rate below us right now, which is pretty cool. Again, you know, it's got all this cool info with like the cloud cover, precipitation rate. I really hope someone makes it so that we get a visual change to the world of like storms. That would be amazing. Hopefully that comes. The data's all here for some other modder to do it. It would be amazing. But it's just cool having this info. And again, very cool if we hit the weather button here. 
to check this info at the Kerbal Space Center. So if you're about to send your people back down to the planet in a command pod or space plane, what have you, you can check out what the conditions are where you're going at the Kerbal Space Center. Very, very cool, very handy. And again, I cannot wait to see what sort of potential science parts come out with this with other modders taking a look at this data. I think it would be amazing. But let's actually head back to the main menu and we are gonna exaggerate some weather in a new save file. Because one of the cool things on here is if we go into options, we do actually have Kerbal Weather Project options and you can change a lot of things. The first option we have here is the ability to enable weather on starts. You can disable that if you so desire. The next two options are I think the most important. The use the MPAS climatology data. Now this is that simulation of the data I mentioned before. And apparently this is based off of five years worth of simulated weather data for Kerbin, which is amazing, and taking everything into account to affect the weather. But that could be, you know, consuming resource-wise for lower-end computers, so you can switch it to a point weather data, where it's going to use a much more simple form of figuring out what the information is, rather than a far more complex one. We then also have the options to turn off the KWP affecting thermodynamics as well as aerodynamics if you so desire. Now on wind, we're going to have the same option here of using either that MPAS climatology data or going with a constant wind speed. I don't know why you'd want this because that's part of the fun of this mod is having that dynamic wind going all over the place. But you can, and what we are going to do is set a constant wind speed to really show how this wind can affect us and go from 20 meters per second on up to 100. Wonderful. And we can even change what direction that constant wind is going to be going in. And finally, you can actually disable wind on takeoff and landing if you're finding it a bit too difficult. And as you can see here, when you're less than 50 meters from terrain, it will turn it off. And finally, we have unit settings. You can set what units this mod is going to display in for wind direction, velocity, etc., which is pretty cool. So you can, you know, adjust all these for, you know, whichever uh, particular unit of measure you prefer, which is pretty nice. So let's just leave all that as default besides the wind and show how much this can affect how the game goes. Now, granted, we're at 100 meters per second here. That is a wind speed that is just not going to be something you're going to encounter very often. Uh, and it's probably going to cause a very bad day for you. But let's actually go to a plane first. Grab another Aris 3A. Launch this. And I've got my hands off my keyboard and mouse right now. And just watch what's happening to my plane in 100 meter per second headwind, I believe, with the direction I have it set as. Oh, look at it. It's freaking out. It's freaking out. <laughs> it does not like that. Now, with a full throttle up engine, we actually can fight the wind, and eventually we will be able to take off, but it's going to take some doing. It's going to take a lot of force to fight through this, but look at that. The wind speed is so much coming directly at us that we were able to take off within feet. Because, yeah, the wind is coming from this direction over here. So we can actually, once we get going here, if I turn on the SAS, I can cut the engine and we'll stay in the air for a while because again, it's a hundred meter per second wind going over our wings right now. So look at that. We're not dropping out of the sky. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, it's, oh, oh, I was turned too much. We're getting affected now. I, I am not touching anything at the moment. Yeah, yeah. That's how the wind can affect you when it's crazy high speeds. That's just very cool. And you can actually, uh, there's pictures of it. I haven't tried it myself, but there's pictures on the mod page of the mod maker actually building a glider and basically staying perfectly still in the air uh, with the headwinds because the glider's just catching it and it's staying there because of that, which is pretty cool. We almost accomplished it with this, but not quite. Now let's actually revert this flight back to, uh, we'll just go back to launch shore and head over to the launch pad, because again, 100 meter per second wins. Let's try and launch a rocket in that. That seems like a horrible idea. Yeah, let's just, um, yeah, back to the space center, leave anyways. Who cares about that one? And we'll go over to the launch pad real quick. 
Waiting to load, perfect. And what rocket should we grab? This one will do, it's crazy and big. Perfect, more surface area to be affected by wind. That seems like a wonderful plan indeed. <laughs> Alright, so let's see how it all affects this, and just to give you again an idea of how these winds can affect things. Now you're already seeing the wind is starting to shake the ship a little bit there. Not too bad though, so it's a pretty solid thing. But let us, oh boy, actually all the calculations are causing it to somewhat lag my game a bit here. Let's launch and release, and we are heading straight for the supports. Oh my god, my frame rate has just dropped so much because it's trying to calculate so many points of wind hitting it. That, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the rocket I'm trying to compensate now for the wind, but I don't think it's going to help too well because, well, that is a lot of wind affecting us right now. Our ship, our rocket, is heading towards the Kerbal Space Center. Let's cut our engines and just suddenly release everything so we get to the capsule and the parachutes. Because, again, with those winds... Oh my god, go, 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 go! Oh, too, too late. All right, revert to launch. I'm gonna try that again because with the parachutes, we'll actually start parasailing. You know what? I could have just moved the parachutes down the line and solved all that. Shouldn't, should have thought about that. Should have thought about that. Well, plan B. Let's do... Uh, uh, ship lander, sure. Let's do from our current location here. Let's put it up about a thousand. Yeah, that seems good. And boom, let's do that. Bop it a thousand. And I'm just gonna go ahead and decouple us. There we are. And let us open our parachutes. And there we go. As you can see, the wind is so much, it's pulling our parachutes that direction. And we are actually going to start parasailing that way and start actually moving. In fact, we are. Our surface speed right now is 9.8 meters per second. Wow, that is a lot of explosions down there. But yes, we are slowly but surely sailing that way <laughs> because of our parachutes and a 100 meter per second wind coming from that direction over there. Magnificent. This is what can happen. Now, of course, normally, the uh, wind speeds that you're going to be affected by are not going to be anywhere near as crazy as this. They're not going to be affecting you quite this much where your craft becomes a parasailing thing, but it's still going to affect it. And I love all of this new data. It's just cool. But as you can see, it can also slow things down. That's why it is nice to be able to choose not the full simulation, but sort of a partial. And there is also an alternate download of this where rather than five years worth of simulation data, it's only one. So it's a smaller file for lower end computers. All cool stuff to have and have the nice option there of. But yeah, just all in all, it's a cool mod and I really can't wait to see how this thing advances, how other modders take advantage of it. And hopefully, I mean, apparently, apparently, oh, I hope it goes well because apparently this is actually going to be presented at this year's annual meeting of the American Meteorological Society. It's just a fun, neat little thing. But yeah, if you'd like to check it out for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description. I know, kind of a long one today for explaining, like, wind, but I'm very excited about this one, and I'm, I probably rambled a bit too much. But do go check it out, have fun with it, hopefully you have enjoyed this one today, and you come back for the next, when hopefully we'll be looking at another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!